local watering hole in Burnaby is packed Saturday afternoon. But these aren't your regular bar patrons. They come from all walks of life. I'm John Knox, president of the Vancouver South Siders, and in my day job, I'm a private investigator. Hi, my name's Shane. Um, I'm a retail consultant and a sales rep in the sporting goods industry, but I'm also the South Siders secretary. All bonded to the hip by their love of the beautiful game. A staple of the Whitecaps fan base, the history of the Southsiders dates back to 1999. This is when a small group of fans gathered at Swangart Stadium on Boundary Road. Unsettled with their seats in the stands, the group packed up and moved to the south side of the pitch. standing, singing, chanting, the traditional British or European style of support, but we didn't fit in with the mold of the family-friendly soccertainment sort of model that was so prevalent throughout North American football during that time. And uh, to be perfectly honest, people sitting around us at Swangard found us to be a nuisance. They didn't want to hear us sing. They didn't want us standing up and blocking their view. They didn't want flags waving around all over the place. So they were complaining about those guys, those guys that are causing all the problems. Problems. We got fed up with it and moved out of the grandstands and started congregating down in the beer garden behind the south goal. And it just seemed to be a place where it naturally evolved into Party Central. If you liked having fun at a match the way we did, it was very clear from any vantage point in the stadium that the south side was where he had to go. Over the years, the group has grown in members and is now an extension of the Whitecaps Club. But according to Knox, it was by no means a smooth transition. One of the things that had happened with the Southsiders is that the guard garbage cans in our section disappeared. They were no longer being placed in our area, so if you were a fan watching a game and you wanted to toss away your beer cup, you had to walk out of the section to get rid of it, by which point 10 people have taken your spot along the fence. So as sort of a silly sort of protest against what we felt was the marginalization of the Southsiders, people began just dropping their beer cups onto the over the fence onto the pitch. Not onto the field of play, but just over the fence line. But issues were resolved and the lads settled back on the fence line with an earshot of the opposition. One keeper in particular, uh, his his girlfriend left him for um, Nick, what's, I forget his last name, but Nick from the Backstreet Boys, she left him for that, so we had, we created a song for that. Another guy got uh, caught drunk driving, so we'd sing songs about that and shake our car keys. Wake up! Following the Caps joining the MLS, it was clear that a new home was needed to house the inevitable increasing fan base. Not only was the club growing in size, but so were the Southsiders. Now 500 strong, the Southsiders army makes the trek three blocks from their pre-game booze up to the newly erected Empire Field. I told you Vancouver that this was coming. I told you. Taking the blueprint from the fan bases of the mighty European clubs, the Southsiders' catchy chants can be heard throughout the stadium on match day. A staple of Swangard, the voices ring from south side to mountain top. For Red Nation Online, I'm Connor Hammond.